The only thing worse than bland lyrics are lyrics that try just a little bit too hard to sound creative. Today we're going to be talking about metaphors, how best to take advantage of them, and how to avoid misusing them. Hi, I'm Brian from Unmute Your Muse TV, where we teach five-minute masterclasses for songwriters. We use the gold song solution to help you write the kinds of songs that people will love, buy, and tell their friends about. Today's main takeaway is, metaphors are a great way to breathe life into your lyrics and to get your listeners thinking, but if not used correctly, they can be distracting. Now, songs have a lot in common with poetry. Both use creative imagery to convey a feeling or to get a point across, and both songs and poetry have a limited amount of space in which to do so. So perhaps it's not surprising that songwriting borrows an awful lot of techniques from poetry in order to convey complex ideas in a small amount of words. Metaphors are one of those techniques. Metaphors are a type of figure of speech that are used to draw a connection between two things that aren't literally connected, but still want to show that they are in some way similar. They usually use or imply some version of the verb to be, like is, are, was, were, will be, ain't, <laughs> etc. Metaphors have been used and misused by songwriters in all sorts of ways, Sometimes it's an overarching theme of the song, sometimes it's a title, sometimes it's just some memorable imagery. So here are just a couple of classic examples. You ain't not gonna... Those are just a couple of famous examples. Now, in the comments below, why don't you take a second to post another song that makes use of a metaphor, just so we can all see a bunch of examples on how the songwriters have used these in the past. Thanks. So, let's say that I wanted to convey the thought, songwriting can be hard work, but it's worth it. It's a great sentiment, but it's not exactly expressed in a particularly memorable way. So with a thought like that, I might try connecting the idea of songwriting to something else that's hard work, but is worth it in the end. Something like giving birth. Let me just give a little shout out to Kelly and all you other mothers out there. I know that <laughs> giving birth is obviously hard work and I have no clue what it's like. Thank you for what you do. So rather than saying songwriting can be hard work, but it's worth it, we could use a metaphor. Writing a song is giving birth. Now, of course, writing a song is not literally giving birth, but using a metaphor like that would be inviting the listener to see the connection. Both require a lot of hard work to bring into the world and are treated as precious treasures once they arrive. But not every metaphor has to be expressed in such a straight ahead way. This equals that. Writing a song is giving birth. There are a number of different forms that a metaphor can take. For example, you could also compare those two things with lines like, the birth of a song, or the song's birth. Now, even though these last two lines don't contain one of those to be verbs, it's still implied. These are still metaphors. So here's my first little songwriting tip of the day. If you have a great metaphor, but you're having trouble fitting it into the amount of space that you have in a particular line, then try reformatting it. Or another thing that you can do is convert it into a simile. Similes are a little bit less direct than metaphors, but they can still be used to insert the same images into your songs to convey your point. Instead of those to be verbs, similes use either like or as. So instead of writing, a song is giving birth, I could say, writing a song is like giving birth, or writing a song is as arduous and magical as giving birth. So converting your metaphor into a simile is another way to expand the ways in which you can say the same thing, if you're having trouble getting your idea to fit into the amount of space that you have. All right, now there are quite a few different kinds of metaphors and we don't have time to go into all of them here, but there is one in particular that songwriters like to take advantage of, and that is the overarching metaphor. Sometimes it's called a controlling, sustained, or extended metaphor, but the idea is this. Sometimes it's a great organizing idea to have one metaphor serve as the theme for the entire song. When this is done well, you can even have all sorts of sub-metaphors and related imagery. 
it's a great way to pull the whole song together. A great example of songwriters using an overarching metaphor is the classic rock song Hotel California by the Eagles. Welcome to the Hotel California. Though the words are ostensibly about a visit to an actual hotel, in multiple interviews, the guys in the band referred to it as their take, as boys from the Midwest, on the jaded, blasé, hedonistic lifestyle that characterizes California. It's an extended metaphor. Now, the key to a good overarching metaphor is sticking with it. The Eagles stayed true to the metaphor of California as a hotel throughout the song. They didn't mix it up with other possible images for hedonism, like, for example, a Sultan's harem tent or a frat party. All of their imagery, characters, descriptions in the song stayed true to the main hotel theme. Which brings me to the first way that songwriters misuse metaphors. If you're going to have an overarching metaphor, you can only have one. <laughs> More than that gets terribly confusing for your listener. So if, for example, you're using the overarching metaphor of, let's say, marriage as a race, don't throw in images or references to marriage being like a fine wine that gets better with age. Another example of misusing metaphors is the mixed metaphor, which means combining two or more metaphors that don't necessarily have anything to do with each other. In some cases, mixing metaphors can be extremely humorous, and there are plenty of songwriters who take advantage of that. What doesn't always work so well is when writers are trying to be serious but mix their metaphors anyway. Some examples from songs include... Like a Rock, Charging Out the Gate by Bob Sager from Like a Rock. I mean, I get it. He's trying to say that whoever he's talking about, or the Ford truck or whatever, is strong and powerful. A rock certainly conveys strength, but rocks don't charge out of gates. I assume that he's talking about a bull at a rodeo, which is something that definitely exemplifies strength, but it's a really awkward juxtaposition. Perhaps my favorite example is Katy Perry's song Swish Swish, and sorry for using so many Katy Perry examples, but she loves metaphors. Now, the overarching metaphor for that song is of a basketball game. She likens herself to a star player. Now, she's obviously not a star player, but she's using it as a metaphor representing how the person she's talking to idolizes her and wants to be with her, but that she's too far above them. And then she brings in some totally unrelated imagery with the line, because you're a joker and I'm a courtside killer queen. And then she plays around with that for a couple more lines. Now, yes, both basketball games and queens do have courts, but they're not even remotely the same. Most of the other references in the song refer to actual basketball things, like layups and swishes and winning. But then we get this reference to a medieval court rather than a basketball court, and it just feels unnecessary to me. But then again, I'm not a Grammy-nominated or Grammy-winning songwriter like Katy Perry or Bob Sager, so maybe they're onto something. <laughs> so here's a great question. Is a mixed metaphor great songwriting? Probably not. I tend to think that with a little more work, they could have found another way to say it. But can it still be effective? Maybe. I'm going to leave that up to you to decide. And actually, while you're thinking about it, why don't you leave a comment below? Answer the question, is it okay to mix your metaphors? Or maybe you can even leave another example of a song that has a mixed metaphor in it so we can all check it out just to see how it happens in real life. Now, before we take leave for the day, let's take a peek at this week's main theme again. Metaphors are a great way to breathe life into your lyrics and get your listeners thinking, but if not used correctly, they can be distracting. All right, make sure to come back next week when we're going to be talking about one of my favorite little bits of music theory for songwriters, harmonic rhythm. All right, everybody, stay safe, be joyful, and keep songwriting.